I read the letter published in the Straits Times today. The Workers' Party now says it wasn't a proposal. Well, come on, you can call it whatever you want. But it was quite clear in the working paper, in a section headline, calibrating the construction of new BTO estates. It says very clearly, around 9,000 or so <coughs> dwelling units are required annually based on various population parameters. Otherwise, HDB will have a vacancy rate <coughs> problem. Indeed, if we had adopted the WP proposal, well, never mind. Heeded their advice, since you don't want to call it pro proposal. And if we had done so and cut back the building of new flats, and the subsequent proposal to allow singles aged below 35 to buy new flats, we would be facing a much bigger supply-demand imbalance today. So, you know, let's all show some humility in this. What happened could not have been predicted. And let's refrain from passing judgment with the benefit of hindsight. On this topic and, and the Minister's iteration of this back and forth that's currently going on in the Straits Times Forum uh, between the PAP and the WP, uh, I'm reminded of what the government whip said many, many uh, years ago in this House. Sometimes it's not just what you say, but what you don't say that also matters. And what the government is not saying, of course, is the context of the WP housing paper was in response to verse a government proposal which wasn't very clear, and it was into the future. So naturally, the housing paper looks at a longer-range forecast of the housing sector. And that was the context, which I have not heard any PAP uh, MP speak about. I fully appreciate the context because I was there in MND. The context was concern about decay of uh, leases, declining values, but the context was also in the midst of a falling resale prices for consecutive years. Um, and the Workers' Party is not alone in highlighting that in, under such an environment, we better consider how many new flats we are putting out. Many experts shared similar concerns. I was under tremendous pressure to cut back BTO flats. It's, it's, there's, no, no, there's no shame in acknowledging that, we got that you got that wrong. The People's Action Party seems to be doubling down on this incorrect assertion, using its tremendous PR and communicative machinery to repeat this assertion about the Workers' Party HDP paper again and again on social media, in letters to the Straits Times, Taobao. So let me go back to that. The call to action comes in the second paragraph, which says BTO projects should continue. I repeat, BTO projects should continue. It doesn't say BTO projects should continue at a reduced rate, it doesn't say BTO projects should stop. It doesn't say, B you laugh. You laugh. It doesn't say, let me continue. It doesn't say BTO projects should continue, but at 9,000 rather than 70,000. It says BTO projects should continue. And then it goes on to say that you can taper that down in the longer term when our USB proposal kicks in, which would yield flats that could be repurposed as sale of balance flats or, 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 or for an expanded public rental scheme. Uh, but that only starts to kick in in about 12 years' time. Let's have debates on our real positions and not mischaracterize one another's positions. And we did not put out a proposal in 2019 that you cut BTO construction. If we had wanted to, we would have set that out clearly in plain language.